Well, today I want to show you how I cut a mitre using my DeWalt Radio Armour Saw DW125. And it's a great little machine, actually. A lot of people are scared of them because they want to the chop the fingers off and what have you, which isn't a great idea. Um, but they are actually really capable machines. And you can pick these things up for 10 a penny now. They're really cheap for what they are. You know, considering how expensive they were when they're new, you know, I paid, what, about... When I bought this one, I've had this as the second, or my third machine, because I wear the hell out of them. This is my third machine, and it's hardly been used when I bought it, and I paid about 150 euros for it. So it's cheap as chips. But I don't use them like the old manual would tell you how to use them. You can use them for ripping, you could use them for um, or shampoo cut, all sorts of things you can use them for. They're apparently yeah, they're the one stop shop for all your cuts. No, they're not. And that's where the danger comes in. I just use it for cutting a square on the end of a bit of wood or doing a mitre for a frame. But after, I don't actually use all the moving components of this machine. I don't, you know, pull that lever and swing the whole thing over or what have you. No, I don't bother. And I don't bring this around and spin it around for the rip cut. No, I don't bother. I do that on the table saw. It, you know, if, I don't think this could ever be a replacement of every single machine in your job. That's a ridiculous statement. I know DeWalt made that statement several times, but I'd say it's absolutely ridiculous. But it's still a very useful machine. I prefer it for pretty much all my cross-cutting tasks compared with like, my chop saws and what have you. Chop saws, I just keep them for um, more portable position. You know, if I want to take one side or if I want to use outside or, or next to where I'm working, I use a chop saw and I just take it with me, which is fine for that. That's great. You know, they're good machines. But where I really like this is, is when I'm doing like the mitres and that, and obviously my square cuts. But I have made little jigs to do all this, these little tasks, these little jobs. And one of them is my mitre jig. And that's it's pretty much this. So it's good for me doing beads and what have you, or mitre into the prawns, it works really, really well. And I've done it so it's really, really simple. All I do is I put that on there like so. Put my little lever down like so, make sure it's in line with the blade. And that holds it down into place. And then all I've got to do is I place my bit of wood along in the end of, well, along the fence. And I know that the edge of this board is in line with the blade. I just want to tap it along, that's perfect. So if I bring it to the end of this face here, I know it'd be exactly where the cut is going to be. So it's very simple. So I could move the camera around, I suppose, but I might have to do an edit. I don't want to do an edit. This is going to be an edited video. So anyway, let's make this cut. I better put some form of glasses on. I do. Better than nothing. All right. So we'll make this cut and make a bite on the end of this piece of wood. So all I've got to do is I'll push it up to the end where I know the saw blade is going to pass. Pull. You can do the push cut, but I find the dust extraction doesn't work as well with push cuts. Um, the pull cut is also better for the um, well, the pull cut is better for the extraction because it's throwing them up back into my little extraction system in the back end. It works quite well. But if I was doing a wider board, I'd probably do it on the push cut. And the reason for that is these things can grab. If they get um, bit, uh, in the in the cut, what have you, can grab and then. You know, it's, it's, it's flying at you, which is not really good. That's one path, remember my blade is done. Hence, I've got a nice new one here, which I'm going to be putting in soon. So that's one bite cut, really simple. And that's my second mitre cut. So there we are, we have a perfect mitre joint. I'll tell you what, I can get square, have a look. What I find is this is quite a repeatable system, so unlike when you're doing the, or using a um, chop saw, and you have to swing that thing backwards and forwards to do the 45s on each direction, um, this seems to be more accurate for me. Well, I think it is anyway. You might not. I'm going to square your knee, and I'm just going to just check see if it is square. Well, I would say that is pretty... Uh, the hole that is. That is pretty darn square. That's good. So that is how I cut a mitre using my radial arm saw. I don't worry about all the floppy turny bits. I just use this. 
This is very simple. Wooden jig. And I just plunk up there when I'm not using that. And then job's a good one. A good one? Or a good one? Good one. It's a good one. Anyway, thank you for watching my little video on my radio alarm saw, my DeWalt PowerShop DW125. There's the 720 in that as well. But anyway, if you most kindly get all that like and subscribe and that, and maybe get the little bell icon, because then you get all oh, the TV in your pocket, that'll be me uploading another video. And I know you'll be excited about that. Oh, thank you for watching. These things are really annoying, aren't they? Oh, God, better. Oh.